Hello and welcome to YouTube's favorite comic book channel, Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Jim Rugg. I'm Ed Piscor. want to remind everybody out there that we have a Cartoonist Kayfabe Patreon set up now. Three different levels to give access to our videos early, get a leg up on the Kayfabe effect. And at the top level, the King Kayfabers are actually sitting in on our recording session, sometimes giving us tidbits of useful information. But uh, they are the first ones in line for these comics that we cover. So check out that Patreon, see what level works for you. The other best way to support us is buy our books. In front of you, you see our bibliographies. We are working cartoonists. Ed Piscor has two volumes of Red Room, three volumes of X-Men Grand Design, four volumes of Hip Hop Family Tree, and coming out later this year, the Hip Hop Family Tree Omnibus, collecting all four of those volumes plus 140 additional pages. Pre-order this one now. This is going to be the book of the holiday season later this year, and by then it'll be too late to reprint. So you want to put your name on a copy now while you still can. Also starting up shortly is Red Room Season 3, Crypto Killers. You see the cover for issue number one here. You can subscribe to this at your local comic book shop. It'll be here before you know it has a lot of cool variant covers as well from me, Peach Momoko, Ed Piscor, and there's a blank sketch cover available for that one. My next book, Street Angel, Princess of Poverty, available for pre-order now from Image Comics. This is collecting all of the Street Angel comics that I have done over the last 20 years that are not in Street Angel, Deadliest Girl Alive. Pick up Princess of Poverty, put it on the shelf next to Deadliest Girl Alive, and you will have a complete Street Angel collection on your shelf. My other books include The Plain Janes, Hulk Grand Design, and Street Angel Deadliest Girl Alive is actually back in print after being unavailable for a while. So pick that one up if you haven't already. So, Ed, we are looking at the, uh, we've been looking at a lot of image books since we started Cartoonist Kayfabe. Wetworks was one of those initial seven books that were announced before Image started. The last one to see print and the last one that we're covering here on Cartoonist Kayfabe, yeah. Wills Portacio, who was kind of part of that X that hot group of ex office artists um, should look at some of his X Men books because I was a uh, a big fan of that stuff at the time. Got them all. This is one of the books I was most anticipating for two reasons. One, I really liked Will's Portacio's art, and two, it's about a paramilitary unit. I picture in my head the team from Predator. Totally. You know, the best of the best, and they had the badass guns. You see, uh, I think this is Dozer here with the submachine gun, those helicopter guns. I just loved all of this stuff at the time, and I was so ready for this book to come out, but I had to wait two years after it was announced. L life, ha life happens sometimes, man. Uh, wasn't, wasn't, there's a character called Dane in here, right? Yeah. Wasn't, Dane, I think, is your main guy. Wasn't one of those characters, like, the, the name Dane, wasn't that Schwarzenegger in some movie? Probably. It sounds like one of those action movie character yeah. names. Like, I can't, I, I, uh. I gave this a quick glance in terms of reading uh, because you, you kind of can't pay me enough to read a Brandon Choi comic. Uh, lots of gobbledygook, lots of words that go nowhere. Uh, he is the luckiest man in comics. But I came up with a theory that I that I could test. I came up with a hypothesis that I could test as a theory with uh, this comic. And it's names with the back half of the alphabet... Uh, four consonants are like badass names. So you have Dozer, you have Mendoza, you have Craven, uh, and and that was like the '90s. Oh, badass kind of guys would always have these like X, Z, V, Y like names, and there's just something inherently tough sounding about. I need to add those to my naming conventions. <laughs> <laughs> Start my list in my notebook of all the cool names that I can uh, then pull from. So we have Wildcats number two here. Yeah, what's and, the date on this one? Um, this would have been September 92. Okay. So I don't know if the date's up front in this one, but this is 94, I'm sure. June 94. So yes. almost two years later. And the reason we have this is there's a Wetworks preview in the back here, but this is like you know, Gen 1 of Image Comics. You can see the Malibu logo. So this is the very beginning. Now, we did the Eric Larson conversation. We went through the Savage Dragon comics. And he was talking about, like, the difference between Digital Chameleon and, like, Ollie Optics or, or just everything else. And Digital, Digital Chameleon was, like, the earliest run of this com computer color separation stuff. And it would have these very proto computer color ticks that by the time that I got to Image Comics was a little bit later and these looked old fashioned these look dated. It evolves fast. Yeah. This digital coloring stuff evolves really fast Like for, and, and that's kind of what we're going to show you that's guys in this video. That's the conversation today. Yeah, that's the conversation today. One thing I learned recently and I think it was in that Eric Larson yeah. conversation, Digital Chameleon Laverne Kandersky who uh, often colored 
Keith Giffen, like mm-hmm. the Lobos and the and the Trencher comics that, that we've looked at on this station. I had no idea. And it made me think, like, what exactly is this color, this digital color separating position? I think they were still doing color guides traditionally. Were, yeah. And then your digital color guy would translate that into the digital files for print. And one of the things that stood out in this issue, we'll get through this real fast, is that um, it's dark. And I think that was one of those early things that people were learning. This is an uncoated paper, which means a little bit more dot gain on each of those little tiny ink dots that make up these colors. And if that gains, it means more coverage. So yeah. you're going to get darker. And I think that's something that a lot of these uh, early digital colorists had to figure out. You know, they had to see some issues and be like, okay, we're going to have to peel back a little bit on our color. We're going to have to try not to get blacks in those color mixes, things like that. This gray is surprising to me because like Joe Chiodo is doing the color set uh, designs for this issue. And we saw a lot of uh, magentas and pinks. And I think of that as him. And and he, he will go against like just doing the gray. So that was kind of surprising to me. Uh, there's our there's Dan Quayle. Dan, Dan Quayle <laughs> making an appearance in here. There are some uh, some very striking images in this. When I think of Wildcats... I'll, sh- I'll show you one that I drew a million times. It's going to be this grifter kind of jumping over a thing. <laughs> so here's a fun tangent. I, I was flipping through and I looked at this and I'm like, whoa, blood splatter. What's happening? Did she gut somebody? No, that's just the punch. Did she su- punch somebody in the face? Got a completely full helmet head. This is like a jet pack. Right. It's such a bad tangent. You're right. <laughs> This is one of those... I drew this a thousand times. It was one of those iconic Wildcats images. Like, this would be in ads and things. I feel like I've seen that image all over the think place. I think I had the Pog. That one was one, and uh, there, there were a few. Look, there's your Dan, Dan Quell, right? Oh, cool. Turns out he's one of these aliens. Yeah, he's a Damonite. So much bizarreness in this. Ah, uh, uh, there's Pike. Yeah. It all comes back. <laughs> It all comes back, Jimmy. This is one of those iconic. Like, when I think of Spartan, this was an image that I would see in a lot of places. Again, I don't know if that ended up being advertising art or what. But he, and this pose, a very popular Jim Lee pose, the uh, the crotch kick. Yeah. And uh, that crotch is not being kicked. It's being exposed in the kicking action. <laughs> We're going to have some crotch conversation on this issue. <laughs> <laughs> um, money shot here of the Young Blood team by Jim Lee. Super cool to see that you know that was something that uh, I when we did the Rob Liefeld conversation last rung uh, with the cable introduction, I would love to have gotten on the record at around that time. Jim Lee does that last issue at X Men Ex- uh, Extinction Agenda and does like a v- badass cable. Rob, what do you think about that? Mm-hmm. Todd McFarlane did his cable and in, in the thing, so yeah. like like stack them up. But uh, it was always cool to see when these guys would draw each other's characters. And uh, in a lot of ways, it would make you appreciate the original artist. It does. This shaft, I think you see shades of that shaft pose in the Youngblood animated. Oh, yeah, sure. And then I was admiring combat, the amount of, like, color in that metal. This is your early digital, what's capable of early digital coloring, where we are going from blue all the way to orange, dude. This feels like a, (laughs) it feels like a rib. It it does. It really does. And and specifically, it would be a rib on Brian Murray. Yeah. Because, like, he would color real wild shit this way. I love it. It's the only piece that looks like this in the whole comic, which suggests the rib thing to me. Like, three different metal textures on combat right there. (laughs) All right. So here's what we've come for. This is your Wetworks preview, which would have been cutting edge digital color 1992. Yes, uh, we are on record. You specifically are on record uh, for saying we were looking at something early. Like you dug the Wills Portacio Iceman. Mm-hmm. Yep. And, and it's all this shiny gimmick stuff. Now, what you liked was a cool approach with the, with the ice yeah. texture. But he was good at shiny surfaces. And what I mean by that is comic shorthand of shiny surfaces, which is these kinds of lines. I don't think that there's too much methodology to the lighting. Like, it's not accurate to a light source or something. I don't even know how you would do that. You'd have to have, like, a like a stainless steel sculpture. Right, <laughs> like, right. But he understands the form of, you know, the pecs and the abs and stuff and could kind of see them in a 3D enough to make them feel metallic. By the way, this is this is your Dane character, so look at how far the color goes from this first crack at it two years earlier. Yes. I This always amazed me, like, Colossus would have this kind of right. metallic sheen. His was blue. They would use blue and, yeah. like, the paper white and stuff, and then these blacks. And I would look at that, and as an artist, it was like, how on earth do you do this? Like, how do you draw metal? And when you do do it, and you and you copy their textures and stuff... It feels like magic. If it, yeah. if it feels like the first time when you draw a face and you draw an eyeball and you put that little white highlight on the mm-hmm. pupil, it's that 
kind of eureka moment kind of stuff, man. Now, to set a stage, 1992, uh, Terminator 2, Liquid Metal, the CG involved in that is uh, cutting edge. Like, they are re-releasing fucking T2 at this point on pay-per-view. It is a big deal. It is a cultural force. And so, like, what's better than, like, one li- liquid metal guy? And, like, who's the liquid metal guy in Terminator 2? A skinny fuck. Make Arnold the liquid metal dude. <laughs> we'll get there, Jimmy. We'll get there. We'll get there. Uh, make Arnold the liquid metal dude and give him five friends. Do you realize how up my alley this is whenever I'm about 13, 14, 15, whenever this is announced? Like, those are the movies I'm watching. Yeah. Those are the characters I'm trying to draw. And then it's like Wills Protasio's in my head, figuring out the exact book for me at that moment of my life. Unfortunately, it didn't come out for two years. Yeah. By then, I had kind of moved on. Right. <laughs> but that is the, the recipe. And the wet works stands for these guys were special forces who went in and killed people in close range. And it's the wet seven. The blood. That would get on you was the wet work. And you see it like splashing on his face. He <laughs> turned to this. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah, for four pages. Yeah, and not you see much. these guys running around doing some things. But you do get the uh, the blood bukkake on our, on our hero <laughs> here at the end. And look at this, How about dude. that shit? Is that J. Scott Campbell, you think? Uh, oh, got, got, it's got about s- the right timing, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got to be right. Got to be 17 and willing to uh, relocate to San Diego, man. Send, maybe, send your samples. Maybe it's all those dudes. Scott Clark. It's... it's uh, what an exciting time. Like, this stuff used to really fuel my, like, I'm going to draw comics and look, man. They're looking for people. I, I said, I never sent submissions to this. I don't like, think I did either. Because, like, the Wild Story, like, the Jim Lee stuff was lower run. To, like, Extreme Studios was my jam. I like that I liked that Rob was, like, just a couple years older and stuff. And you he, can see Pitt getting his uh, his due here. And Wetworks, you could have pre-ordered this two, <laughs> two years in advance. And you can see where the X-Men's and stuff are. So, like, X-Men's at, like, issue 18 or something, which uh, Jim Lee leaves at issue 11. But even he still had ghosts and stuff. Uh, so, that, you know, that's an interesting piece. I just saw Liam Sharp talk about um, his his first comics sell out at the distributor level since he said Death's Head 2. To put a, put a time stamp on this, man. That's incredible. What a journey. 30 years. Show that triple cover, man. So, this story was delayed two years. And the reason is some real personal loss on Will's Portatio's part. And uh, I would not talk about that normally because that's none of my business. But he writes a letter kind of explaining this. He had lost a sister. I think there was a lot of family uh, care that was necessary. And ends up, I believe, selling Wetworks to Jim Lee as part of, like, working through all of this, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That That, that is, like, the scary part of um, what we do is that there are no sick days. There are, uh, there's no no workman's comp. Uh, none of that. It's no bereavement pay. Uh, so you have to have royalty. You got to, like, make your life work and all that kind of thing. And, uh... Like, I just, I, I feel for this so much, man. It's impossible to work when you have something so heavy happening in your life. It, it, there's no way to, to, to do what you're supposed to do on the page with people who don't give a fuck and expect the best from you and pay their money for your comic. They don't care That's at true. all what's Readers going are, on in your uh, life. Pretty, pretty callous when it comes to their entertainment. Totally. And, uh, man if you to to be like if you want to talk about bad luck delaying this book probably shaved off 400,000 600,000 units lots yeah i mean it really yeah like like those first image books were selling a million give or take 200,000 yeah um I don't know exactly what this sold, but yeah, it's probably under 500,000. Right. You know, two years later, like things were bottoming out. You know, these orders would have been canceled and then resolicited. Like it was a very, very heavy price he paid by not, not being able to release this. But with that first but wave, the dude is a mensch and family matters way more than fucking funny books. So he gets props. Yeah. Let's dive back into the story. Do it. 
we mentioned Predator and that opening scene in the helicopter of like the, the Predator commando team rolling in. That's what we've got here, right? Fucking central- I'm back in the theater as a kid watching Predator. Central casting. Uh, the You got the guy literally called Jester, <laughs> who I guess maybe he's the, uh, what is the sexual tyrannosaurus yeah, what of is that this dude? issue? Yeah, the Shane Black character. I forget his I was, character I was name. Think, I was thinking uh, oh, Jesse. Jesse Ventura. Yeah. That little dude's the one that's telling all those, those jokes, though. Right. Uh, Wills is back in the game. He's going for it. To the point where he's going to do all this Jeff Darrow like tech just for panel borders. Like talk about like oh like to what end, right? Yeah. Do you think that Scott Williams is just cussing him as he's going around inking? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty cool character design. Lots of black on the page, man. And I do think that it's it's that like when in doubt, black it out kind of black, yeah. like this. The the like is the drawing getting away from Wills? To the point where he's like, you know what? Shade that shit. Yeah, I don't know the or answer to that. It, I actually think the black kind of works in most of these places. Or is it... Yeah, an, I don't know what it, the thinking is. Well, you, you're not drawing when you have black. So, like, or is this a conceit to get the book out a little quicker? A little bit quicker by just kind of, like, doing that. Uh, one of the things that I would notice with Wills compared to Jim Lee, because there's a very similar style, and certainly when you have Scott Williams doing the ink and he creates a holistic approach in a way, is that... Uh, uh, Will uses more black than than Jim Lee does. Yeah, there's some real differences in their style, and and I think you see it more maybe in those X Men. Whenever they're both doing X Men and Uncanny X Men, you can see some of those differences. Because yeah. like I said, I liked Will's a lot at that time. I was really into his stuff. Um, you know, it's interesting because both those guys have their shortcuts and shortcomings, but they were different. And uh, that's I think what you want in a studio is have have these guys that are coming in with some different uh, different tools. One of the things that that they add to this book is there's supernatural stuff that they're fighting, like uh, vampires and werewolves. I don't think Wills does the um, wolf hair texture particularly well. No, no. And you know what? You know what's real funny is uh, early, like early on in my like illustration career, I was up for I was going to do a, a ad campaign for Oakley Blades, and uh, they they uh, did not go with me, and it was Wills. And it was like a werewolf with, with uh, He's sunglasses. He's done a couple of books like that. Yeah. Of like those, those hairy characters. So maybe it's just a personal taste on my part. This We're is our, our first wet work guy. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's this symbiote. You see it like going in his mouth and in his eyes and stuff. This this liquidy gold metal. Um, <laughs> it reminds me like at that time, you've got Exo Man War. You have Venom. Like these are some of the popular ideas of like this symbiote living on, uh, you know, a character. And we got to come up with a way to just make our metal dudes, man. So they are pinned down. Claymore is this dude's name. Of course. <laughs> we The Y is is back consonant. Um, they are pinned down. Dude gets fucking doused. And it's not easy going. He has to manipulate it in order to breathe. He's dying in there. Yeah. Fight it. Fight it, Claymore. And you see him struggling to breathe and finally gets the mouth open. Yeah. But still, he's a statue. <laughs> <laughs> right. We're not going to see the full effect of what this does, but it does. It is bulletproof. Yes. So everybody can appreciate that very quickly. It's all about the color here. Like, like I, uh, there was a video. Look at the amount of blood. <laughs> yeah, man. There was a video we did called the Rosetto Stone of Image Comics, uh, where it came out from he- Heroes Illustrated, a little little uh, perfect bound gimmick, and it showed all the different strips and stuff, and like you know, um, Wild Star and and like all of that shit, and like the wet work stuff looked the most magical to me. I did not have that comic. It looked the most magical to me. I couldn't believe the leaps and bounds that comic book color technology took. Uh, It feels perfect for a 90s image because you almost couldn't abuse the lens filters and the little shinies too much because it, it was a character built for that. Yeah, absolutely. And you're getting to see some of those wet works, like dude's heads exploding his uh, demolition <laughs> charges go off. So so these guys are pinned down, right? Yeah. <laughs> this and, is always a good yeah, idea. Yeah, go back one. These guys are pinned down. They don't know what to do until they do. And you see some more vials mm-hmm. here. One for each of them, conveniently. Conveniently. And also, like, they saw... See, this is a sacrifice that these guys make for their country, Jim. Because they saw what completely happened to their fellow men, and they choose to go there. Like, like I like that he kept his glasses yeah. on. Uh, so you can flip the page, and this is the sacrifice that our guys make. Like, they are a full. They, they are now what works the team, and they're able to do away with, with our guys. But if you if you keep turning the page, Jimmy, 
you're going to see the sacrifice <laughs> that yes. that these guys have made for their country because they are now full eunuchs, no nipples, no fucking cocks. Keep going, dude, because like we're seeing them <laughs> naked. Yeah, where are those black shadows now? Now, I don't know much about, you know, burn victims and stuff, but I do know that like the first shit to go really like on a face is like the ears. It's like not a part of the thing. So maybe that's the deal. It just kind of is this like hangy appendage. It just fucking singes off. But they are like Nephilims or like biblical angels or whatever. You know, like they are now rendered sexless, but they did it for the core, for Team Seven. (laughs) <laughs> here are your vampires and maybe this is going to be a werewolf character i wonder if this came in late or if this was an initial part of the idea of what works was that they were going to be fighting these creatures of the night yeah if it's stuff the that supernatural if, yeah if it's stuff that that uh, will slikes because i gotta tell you like like uh he hits they hit a lot of home runs with a lot of the subject but like vampires and rice made the vampire extra uncool to like hardcore gen x 90s kids that shit was pussy that shit was whack. And like all of vamp, I don't think the vampire has come back, you know, cause team Edward and shit like that didn't do much to make it less bitchy, you know? So like that was a misstep. We were past that shit. Cause we, cause we grew up with the slashers, dude. We grew up with, um, Freddie and Jason and Michael Myers. And this shit was like our dad's horror guys. He did, um, Legion of monsters it was a it was a marvel book but it was a Mm. two-parter with steve gerber writing and it was not long before this you know it was maybe right before his x-men or or some somewhere around in there but it was like two big square bound issues and it was the same deal like it was these monster characters one of the coveted runs that the image guys love that they just they don't talk about it at the top it's always like art adams or mike golden or whatever but uh two of dracula yeah was a big comic for those dudes uh so maybe he's expressing his tomb of dracula love here yeah, it could be. Preview of your uh, making the Wildcats cartoon. Big deal at the time. Were he Rose, not Z Rose. It's amazing, too, to look at this and think, like, you know, Malibu here on the inside front cover of of basically Image Year One, and then what it becomes, like, two years later where we're seeing, like, the whole, you know, they've got animated series, a giant editorial department, all kinds of stuff in production. Like, this is a publishing a house right two years into this run yeah did not take them long to get up and running yeah it's 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 wild stuff and and uh and you know wills comes in at 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 the 11th hour with the wetworks comic and uh he gets more props than most man because he sticks with it for a while like uh, jim lee will do his couple issues and then go off and be a, a a studio head and and you know p- pimp his jobbers and stuff. There was the greatest ad campaign for this thing. Yeah. Whenever whenever they come when they're finally ready to release it, there would be the ad of like the team looking all cool and stuff, and it was like two years in the making, uh, you know, fourteen pints of ink, two hundred and twenty pen nibs, like all of this stuff, and it was like part wet works cool and then part like the making of wet works yeah. and boy did i eat that up i would look at that ad and wizards and, and other other image books and just be like i can't wait for this book again because wouldn't they talk about like shell casings or, or like bullet i feel like there were, there were like bullets and then like pen nibs right <laughs> <laughs> yeah i should have i'll probably pull it up it's probably on screen right now but that ad was one of my all-time favorite comic book ads and it just it it, it whetted my appetite yeah man so there it is, dude. We completed the 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 image founder um, v- issue one videos, and the conversation that emerges with this one is exceptional because of the passage of time. Just seeing how computer color develops over such a fast period, it's like you know Moore's law catches up or something. Because to render this on a 1992 machine might have taken you know the weekend or something. Yeah, I mean, I I don't know that you could have made it. You know, like you're even yeah. looking at like these tiny lens flares. Like you mentioned all those gimmicks. Yeah. That uh, Photoshop's like whatever filters that they would provide early on. It was like what works took advantage of all those. Exactly. Weirdly. And built for it. Very strange. Yeah, built very for strange. It. It, Adobe could have been the other ones that you might have sold this to at the time where it's like we can show off all of your gimmicks, Photoshop. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's so funny because like this is what we were all chasing and we felt like you know the glossy paper it's like a higher quality book and stuff but then as we develop our own taste and we and we grow and there's been a, a glut of this it's it makes sense that like our comics like, like go back we revert when we have our option to color 
it's like strip away all of this like none of this stuff works anymore it's like od'd on it in in the uh, 90s man yeah you get to a point of like how much further can you push it but it is a moment like for 1994 this is cutting edge production and this goes further like like we can um look at uh liquid the colorist for joe mad on uh on x on x-men there will be whole characters that are basically the the uh colorist is tasked with designing these like steam characters and shit like maybe joe mad draws something but gives them full license to fucking do whatever they need to so it becomes this like complete tandem of like drawing art and and computer color art that gets further pushed And, and those colorists will do depth of field in a big way where like storm is flying and it's in sharp focus and then yeah they will fuzz out the best so like they put computer coloring evolves and it gets pushed to i feel like the apex moment is um dark knight strikes again and then it all fucking we got to bring it back down to earth yeah it that was a different direction and at that point it was like anything goes yeah. and you would see people do flat colors after that you know where it was like exactly. oh i just have a million colors i don't have to do gradations on everything right but i have these colors that didn't used to exist it's really interesting because that's the piece like two things come out of image in my mind one is you get to own your own characters so start figuring out your own characters when you're coming right. up and the other thing is they revolutionized the color part of this yeah. industry and you know if they hadn't done it somebody else would have at some point yeah but they were the ones who did it mm-hmm. and they did it aggressively like, it was from the very beginning of Image, they're like, here we go, cutting-edge color and production. Yeah, yeah, and and those glossy comics, that, that did cost a little more, they cost a quarter extra than a Marvel comic, but you really felt like you were buying good value. And it was, it was totally that time of, like, here are the upper deck cards, you get fewer cards, but it's not on that, like, brown cardboard paper, it's on white cardstock, and that felt so, it's the exact same thing. Yeah. Yeah, and it's funny, it's ironic, because Marvel's getting into the card business at that time. Yeah, Fleer, they buy Fleer. But they aren't putting any of the effort into their comics. No. Because when Jay Lee comes over for Youngblood Strike File, he's yeah. still doing Namor on newsprint. Right. And it's like, yeah, if you're an artist, which of these do you want? Yeah. One seemed like they really cared about your art, and one seemed like they didn't care at all. Yeah, yeah, just churning out those pamphlets, man. Good to go? Yep. Okay, favors like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the bell. We will notify you when new vids are available. King K Fabers are watching these videos before anybody else because they get those videos delivered to them uh, after we edit them, but they're watching us live stream the recording session at this very moment. The videos are brought to you by the books that we make. Jimmy, tell the people what you have out there. Hulk Grand Design, The Plain Janes, and Street Angel Deadly Girl Alive are my latest books in print that you can pick up. My next book, Street Angel, Princess of Poverty, this is the cover, will be coming out later this uh, year from Image Comics. You can pre-order this now. It collects all of the Street Angel comics that are not in Deadly Girl Alive, uh, some of them going back 20 years, some of them having never seen print before. So you're going to want to add this collection to your bookshelf and get all of the Street Angel if you add Deadly Girl Alive to your checkout order. And join me on patreon.com slash jimrug where you can see my latest comics I'm serializing there along with downloading out-of-print zines and minis and lots of other good stuff. Hip Hop Family Tree Omnibus is going to be hit in stores in 2023, but you need to put in those pre-orders, uh, hassle your comic shop. you got to get these these copies uh, uh, pre-ordered because we're printing up a finite amount of them to start and you don't want to be left uh, waiting for the reprint of these com- of these comics to come. 504 page collection uh contains all four volumes of the existing hip-hop family tree books but even if you have those volumes man you're getting 140 pages of additional art material in the uh omnibus red room is going to start coming out uh in may this is the cover to red room issue number one murder murder on the dark web for fun and profit is the name of the game in red room comics it'll be coming out monthly self-contained stories two trade paperbacks out there right now three volumes x-men grand design and WYSIWYG. jimmy what else do we have going on subscribe to the cartoonist kfabe newsletter at the links below this video you can also find cartoonist kfabe t-shirts merchandise hats sweatshirts stickers and lots more at our spread shop that link is also under this video great ways to support the cartoonist kfabe channel given those marching orders will be on our way read more comics